This podcast is on the common lab equipment that you'll be using this year. The most common piece of equipment that you'll come across is the beaker. The beaker is used to hold liquids that are not likely to spill or splatter when you heat them or release any gas when, when reactions are taking place. They come in very common sizes. The beaker you see in front of you is a 250 milliliter beaker. It has a 200 milliliter line on it, but no 250. So when you're asked for a 250, don't go around looking for the one with the 250 line on it. You won't find it. Same is true of an Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flasks are those flasks we use when you're stirring a liquid uh, that might splatter or splash. When you're heating it, it might do so. Um, and they too come in very common sizes, and the maximum line on them is always less than the capacity of the of the flask. To measure accurately the volumes of liquids and solutions in chemistry, we use graduated cylinders. Uh, the measurements here are usually in what are called milliliters. Um, and notice the plastic guard. The plastic guard is kept at the top so that when they get knocked over, uh, the glass doesn't break. Uh, you shouldn't uh, discard them or slide them all the way to the bottom. You should leave them up at the top. Test tubes are very common in chemistry. Uh, you've seen them probably all the way back into um, intermediate or elementary school um, and just make sure that the test tube you use is large enough for the amount of liquid that you're uh, trying to work with. When we heat solids to very high temperatures, usually to drive the water off um, or to cause a chemical reaction to occur, uh, you want to use these because they're made out of porcelain and they can stand the high temperatures. They also come with a cover and you use the cover to cover the top partially that holds the heat in but you want to leave it what's said to be as a jar so some of the uh, gases can escape. Watch glasses are used to hold small amounts of products from a reaction. You can use them to cover a beaker sort of like a lid. The gas can still escape through the lip of the beaker. They're also used to put uh, filter paper on when you're drying them in an oven or just leaving them overnight. Evaporating dishes are used for heating uh, to drive off water or evaporate the water. Um, that way we can recover the solid after a reaction takes place in solution. They too are made out of porcelain. Stirring rods in chemistry are usually glass. That's because they, uh, glass does not react most of the chemicals you're working with. You can also use them in a rather neat way as when you're filtering you can pour your solution literally down the rod. You touch the rod to the lip of the beaker and when you pour uh, the liquid uh, sticks to the rod as it goes down into the filter flask. Depression plates are used when you want to do lots of experiments at a time. Say you're going to test one thing with four different or five different uh, solutions. You put it in and you use each individual well or depression in the plate. Uh, it's also very useful when you're using very small quantities uh, that way we can be very green in our chemistry that does not produce a lot of waste materials. Funnels are used to filter uh, solids from a solution mixture. Test tube racks come in two forms, usually wood or plastic. Uh, the wood versions are used when you're dealing with hot test tubes because hot test tubes can melt uh, plastic ones. When using crucibles, you want to use the appropriate tongs. Uh, notice the way the crucible tongs are used. The uh, little tips of them are not used to grab the crucible. The crucible fits in the uh, circular sort of space. The tips can be used to pick up very carefully the lids of the crucibles. Bunsen burners are used to heat non-volatile liquids and solids, and especially those that uh, don't burn. With a Bunsen burner, you would use a ring stand. The ring stand is used to support uh, your equipment. You do so by putting an iron ring on it. The iron ring provides the very stable platform. Notice that the iron ring is positioned over top of the base of the ring stand. That is the most stable way of doing it. You also will use water troughs once in a while. You can use them to cool hot solutions down. Uh, you can also use them when collecting gases by what's called the water displacement method. Wire gauze squares are, are sitting on top of the iron ring, and that's what you put the beaker on when you're going to heat them. The purpose of the little ceramic disc is to distribute the heat evenly. If you're going to heat something very, very hot, uh, like a crucible, then you would use what's called a clay triangle, uh, and that's what you would use to heat the crucible over your Bunsen burner. Notice in the picture that the 
lid of the crucible is slightly ajar, that would allow the gases to escape from whatever it is that's being heated. Burette clamps are used with the ring stands again uh, to hold burettes uh, for titrations, and you can also use them to hold temperature probes in flasks or beakers or whatever it is that you're working with. If you need to pick up tiny small objects, uh, little pieces of metal, uh, little pieces of rock or something, uh, you would use uh, forceps. Uh, you just use them to pick them up and transfer them to something else, possibly a watch glass. Uh, you don't use them to carry anything around with. Tube clamps or tongs likewise are used to hold a test tube that's too hot to handle. If you're going to hold it in a flame, you would use the test tube clamps. Um, also, if you know your reaction may produce uh, gases or lots of bubbling and fizzing, you would use a test tube clamp so that you don't get the stuff all over your hands. My pets are used as medicine droppers. Um, the one at the top is a typical plastic pipette you can use to transfer small amounts of liquids. The ones at the bottom are, are uh, used to dispense specific amounts of liquids. They're graduated. They generally go from 1 to 10 mils, and they're very useful for smaller liquid volume measurements. Wash bottles are used to wash down the equipment so that you can wash the solid all into the filter paper. That's probably the most common uh, use for the wash bottle. The mortar and pestle is used to crush solids into finer powder, powders. The pestle is pushed into the solid in a sort of a circular motion. That way you can get uh, the fine powder produced. That fine powder might be put in a weighing boat if you're going to weigh it um, on an electronic balance. Uh, weighing boats are what we use to weigh uh, out the solids. We do not put the solids directly on the balance pan. Where you get your solids into the weighing boats are spatulas or scupulas. The spatula up top is rather small for transferring small amounts of material. The scupula for larger ones. It's that funny circular thing at the bottom. If you're going to move a hot beaker, you would pick it up possibly with beaker tongs. Um, the beaker can't be so hot because it's been heated to dryness. It may be hot enough then to melt the rubber at the end. So you don't use these with a flame, but you can use them with a beaker full of boiling water. They're very, very good for that. If the beaker's a 250 or smaller, you might use a heat uh, gripper. That's one that you actually put your hand into. Again, it's used for beakers that are too hot to handle. To get that Bunsen burner lit, you need to use a striker. The striker contains a a flint which sparks when you pull it against the rough surface inside. They'll take some practice to get to know how to use them. Burettes, we mentioned them earlier, they're used to dispense um, accurately measured quantities of solution, generally in a titration. And finally, uh, the last item of equipment that's quite common is an electronic balance. Um, you'll find them around the lab. They come in two types, um, top loading and analytical. The top loading is probably the most common, and they generally measure to two or three decimal places. The analytical level, the weight of four, that's only used in, in analytical, uh, very sensitive labs. And that's a brief rundown of some of the pieces of lab equipment that you'll encounter this year.